Hello, welcome back to Casual Kitchen Chats with Kate, episode four, where I sit in my kitchen and I have a chat with you lovely people. And in today's episode, I am talking about shielding and cystic fibrosis, my experience, my thoughts, just a lot of rambling, basically. I haven't written anything down for this video. It's just all in here. So it could be a little bit all over the place. I could just start rambling stuff like I am now. Jellyfish, what? It's also like 34 degrees outside at the moment. And with this whole subject, it just means that this casual kitchen chat is in need of a beer. So here we are with a beer. That didn't rhyme. Why do I bother? Day I'm filming this, which is the 25th of June. It's been exactly 100 days since I started shielding pretty much. And I won't lie to you, it's not been an easy 100 days, but I do feel like I'm in a little bit of a different situation to most people who have been shielding. <sighs> and I didn't think I'd be talking about this today. I didn't think I'd ever be talking about it at all because I've always felt pretty embarrassed and ashamed about it. But here we are. I've got a beer, it's 31 degrees, so. Here's the thing, right? A lot of people who are shielding have understandably been missing the outside world, missing meeting up with friends, going out wherever, go for a coffee, go, you know, just meeting up with friends, basically. And here's the thing for me, I'm gonna be completely honest, and I'm very nervous to say it, but I don't really have any real life friends. I have a lot of online friends and support and stuff, and that's amazing, but real life friends? I don't have anyone who I can go and meet up with for a coffee or, or, or anything like that. So, um, that's quite hard to say out loud, but it's true. It's kind of at a point now where I'm, I'm just fed up. I'm just fed up of feeling um, lonely. And I never ever use that term lightly because I know how heartbreaking and detrimental it is. But this is going off on a different subject here, but I'm just trying to give you a, a background info. Like I say, I haven't, written any notes down for this it's just all in here so bear with me what i'm trying to say here is that because i don't have a social group to go to this last hundred days have felt quite normal to me exaggerated normal because obviously i could go out and go dog walking when i was dog walking um for those of you who don't know i resigned just before we went into lockdown so currently jobless but most of the time it's felt quite normal for me and another sort of thing i'm thinking i guess is that when these restrictions are lifted and people are so excited to go and meet their mates and go out for this and that and whatever and then there's just me and it's just it's it's just the same and it, it still hurts i am very scared of being um, left behind, I guess. But it's always been like that. So I don't know why I'm suddenly panicking about that. I don't know whether I should go into that whole thing, whether it should be a separate video, you know, the whole loneliness thing. I don't know if anyone would be interested in that. Let me know. It feels like over these hundred days, like my independence has really sort of was here and now it's just like here. Same with a lot of people, I know. Um, and one of the things that I'm really lucky with is that I have been shielding with my parents because if, if I was shielding on my own, then my heart goes out to anyone who's been shielding on their own and dealing with loneliness, especially the people who don't really have many people to talk to and it just makes me feel really lucky and grateful to be shielding with my parents as much as <laughs> they can um twiddle me knobs is that the right word twiddle me knobs <laughs> that's not a thing is that um push me buttons that's a <laughs> not twiddle me knobs <laughs> that's, that's tickled me my feather I need to stop, don't I? I'm trying to say here is basically I'm um, I'm very lucky and grateful to be shielding with my parents because I think without them it would have been a really really tough struggle. Although I'm sure a lot of other people can relate to this, but suddenly the roles are reversed in this whole shielding thing because I'm the one telling my parents not to go out and like don't do this, stay away from people, <laughs> two meter social distance because they have more of a social life than I do. It isn't surprising, but I have to be the parent in this situation and be like, all right, 
Be back before 11 p.m. now. <laughs> so, okay, I'm getting me, me words twiddled again. Twiddle me knobs. <laughs> the thing is, because I deal with social anxiety, when the lockdown was first announced, I was like, yes. <laughs> this is the perfect excuse not to go out and meet anyone. I don't have to push myself out of that comfort zone. I can just sort of relax. And at the time, I knew, I knew that it would be a short-term gain for a long-term race. Ooh, does that make sense? Short-term gain for a long-term race. So what I mean by that is that for the first couple of months when I didn't have to worry about it, I could just be myself. And then I knew when it got to June, it was gonna be a lot worse than when I originally started. Because for those of you who know, I've been trying to combat social anxiety for a really long time. But I did try to push myself out of the comfort zone and I knew that I was slightly moving forward. So I was like here, and then like, I was just trying to push myself forward here. And then lockdown comes along and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like over here now. I always knew that the social anxiety aspect of it was not gonna be good. I didn't really think that the anxiety part of it would be that bad, but it's, it's bad, it's pretty bad. And let me tell you about a little story. When it was first announced that us shielders could go outside, I've, you know, saw a lot of people's posts and stories and stuff saying how, how good it was to finally go outside and it was just, just did so much good for their mental health and made them feel a bit more free and all of this sort of stuff. And then there's me. <laughs> And then there's me who walked to the top of my road because I needed to film something. Of course, the first time I'm gonna go out in a hundred days, it's to film something for a video. It was the backdrop for a green screen, which you didn't see in my last video. I wasn't even in a shot. It was just a camera on a tripod filming the background. And I was literally up there for about five minutes. And then as I was walking up there, I could feel myself tense. My muscles, my hands were clenched. My jaw was clenched. My tongue was stuck to the roof of my mouth. And then I get up there and I'm filming. During that five minutes, I, of course, with CF, decided to have a coughing fit. And there were people walking around. I went at half seven in the morning because I thought not many people are gonna be out by then. I'm wrong. Turns out everyone goes out in the morning. So, cool. And it's just one of those coughs that you can't get a grip of. Do you know what I mean when I say that? Like if it's quite tickly and it's dry, then it's just continuous and there's just no way it's gonna stop. And there's people around me and my brain freaks out. I'm panicking now because I'm scared that they think that I have coronavirus. And I panicked. I packed up my camera pretty quick and just walked back down the road very fast. As soon as I got through the door, I was just in tears. I was just full of panic and anxiety. And I thought that this might happen because I have always had a bit of a coughing anxiety thing, which I'm gonna do a whole separate kitchen chat about. So we'll get to that on another time. But now this whole coronavirus situation and you know, people coughing, <clears throat> it's meant that my coughing anxiety has gone from like here all the way up to here. I didn't experience the um, the freedom that other people were talking about and how they felt so much mentally better because I came down and felt very much mentally worse. So when the other day the announcement came out and I watched it live that shielding was gonna be lifted um, on, the, on the 6th of July, we can go out and meet up to six people social distancing. And then on the 1st of August, the, the shielding will be hopefully lifted. And I genuinely broke, I broke down. Because I thought, well, if I can't walk to the top of my bloody road, how am I supposed to go out? and find a job. That isn't just an issue for my social anxiety, but for my general anxiety as well. So, in a little bit of conundrum here, a bit of countdown conundrum, and I feel like this is the same for a lot of people because I saw this amazing video on Instagram the other day called Time to Change Campaign, and it's basically um, like a text message between two people and one person's like, hey, you coming round for a barbecue or something? And they're like, oh no, I don't really feel like it. And then they start to reply with, oh no, I'm sure it'll be fine. Um, and then they delete it and say, no worries, you know, there's no rush. 
I can give you a call tonight instead if you like. So I feel like that is so important because people need to be mindful of this. People cannot just start saying it will be fine. The, the restrictions have lifted and you know the government have said it's absolutely fine to go out now so why don't you just go out it'd be great for you blah 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 blah. you need to be mindful of this because a lot of people are struggling with this it, i know it's not just me i'm sure it's not just me i hope it's not just me <laughs> i'm sure it's not um <laughs> just because it's fine for you and you don't really mind going out and having a walk and going to the pub or whatever doesn't mean that everyone else thinks exactly the same as you so that's something to be mindful about something my beautiful friend abby said the other day was the conflict of being a shielding person who doesn't trust the government and Yup! <laughs> I completely agree with you there, Abs. One of the issues, I think for a lot of shoulders, is the fact that we feel a little bit forgotten about. Because, you know, every other update it's like, oh yeah, da 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 da. And then there's just like nothing about our shoulders and we're just like left in the dark because it was like, oh, our pubs are opening soon. Shoulders, we will talk about you another time. <laughs> and we're just at home like... And then also on another side of things, I do feel a little bit gutted and I apologize if this comes off the wrong way, but I feel a little bit like I've missed out on this whole experience in a way. Not, not the immediate experiences of the virus, but you know, the aftershocks, if you like. For example, when you go to the shops, you stand two meters apart apparently, and you know, you wear gloves and masks and one in at a time and one way around a shop. And I'm seeing all of these things and I'm like, I'm a little bit gutted that I've missed out on such a big part in history. I wasn't a part of that, I was just sat at home. But on another note, I, like, I just wanna make that clear that I'm, I'm very glad to stay at home and not get the virus. Um, it's just a weird perspective, kind of a weird emotion to feel that I kind of wanted to go out, but at the moment I've got like severe anxiety. So it's a little bit of a conflict in time in my brain at the moment. Another thing, which I am really struggling with, and this goes back to the anxiety part of it, the general anxiety, is the fact that the last time I went out to the shops or to anywhere, it was all normal. It was absolutely fine. It's like nothing's changed in my brain. Because I haven't experienced it, my brain thinks that everything out there is dandy, is great, it's absolutely fine. It's how it was before, before this whole thing started. It just kind of feels a little bit like a film or something because I've not experienced it myself. This is basically what I'm trying to say. And now there's just a lot of anxiety about it because I can't relate to it myself. Does that make sense? And if anyone out there is feeling similar, you've got anxieties, you've got worries, you are scared to go outside, just know that it's, it's natural to feel like this. Of course it's natural to feel like this. We've been stuck inside for three months and that's okay because you're not alone with this. I certainly feel that way and I am sure a lot of other people do as well. And yeah, I think it's all about easing yourself into into taking baby steps. That's, that's the secret here, isn't it? It's top secret, it's baby steps. <laughs> so to just taking it one step at a time, I think it's important to have some conversations with your friends or families, the people who might say to you, go on, go out for a walk now, or go on, go back to your job, or go and meet so-and-so for a picnic in the park. I think it's important to have those conversations and let them know how you are feeling because that will lead to less assuming and and more understanding, I guess. And it has been a strange time for everyone, not just us shielders, but loads of people. It's gonna take everyone different times to adjust to it. And I think it's just important to understand that everyone is not at the same level that you are. And I hate it when people say, oh, you'll be fine, you'll be fine, just go out, you'll be fine. And I'm like, oh, you're not really taking this seriously, are you? <laughs> So yeah, that was something. So anyway, that concludes Casual Kitchen Chats with Kate episode four. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, give it a like, drop a comment down below. Subscribe if you wanna, because I make all these types of randomy, talky videos. So if you're interested in seeing this ugly mug again, then feel hit for it. <laughs>
<laughs> I, de I definitely malfunction then. Oh, I am so sorry. That's not what I'm normally like on this channel. Oh, well. Anyway, I feel like the 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 blah, 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 the heat and the drink is starting to get to me now. So I'm a little bit. Oh, ha, ha. I don't know. And of course, subscribe if you wanna. And I will see you in the next one. That is the first kitchen cat cats. First kitchen cats with Kate. <laughs> well, I just sit in my kitchen and talk to a cat. What? This is the next thing. Oh, I need a cat. Derek! Derek! I'm thinking two different things here. Derry Lee and Derma O'Leary. Deliri. Nancy. Wow, this Desperados has gone to my head.